Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to give you an update on how I'm getting on with the lion animation. I'll be talking about animation techniques, shape keys and lighting. So I've been working hard on both the animation and integration into the scene. I feel like I'm getting there with this, it's still far from perfect, but I have sent it to the client and they're quite pleased with how it's going. I've been trying to tidy up the animation so it looks a bit better, I've animated the hair really slightly which I'll go through shortly and I've added some lighting effects and things like that. So let's take a closer look in Blender. One of the main things I've been working on is the keyframes of the animation. And one thing I've really found and learned from this process, and I'm still learning animation, but I am finding the less keyframes the better. So if we take the root bone for example, which is here on my line, you can see the set keyframes I've got. And a nice feature within Blender, in the armature settings, is the motion paths. And if you click on the bone and click calculate, it will show you the path that it's traveling. Also, what's very handy is putting any objects that are interfering with your view, put them on a separate layer and hide that layer, of course. And you can see my animation working through here. Yes, he does go into the rock in places, but you don't really notice in the final animation. So you can see it all in slow motion. Sort of goes a bit weird at the end, but he's off the screen, so I don't worry too much about that. There's some areas like this that still need to tidy up where his arm overextends. Interestingly, you don't really notice that sort of thing in the main animation view. And these sort of distortion with the legs, I haven't tied it up again because he's off screen there, so it doesn't matter too much. It's a bit naughty really, because it doesn't look clean at all from the side here. But when you look at the front, it's not too bad. But the main point I want to make is that you can see your curves and it's much easier to edit when it's like that. And the other thing I found early on with animation is set out your major keyframes and then add detail from there. But if we take this area here for example, there's two keyframes very close to each other and there's very little point for them really except to squish up his body as you can see it's sort of squishing up there so it sort of rotates slightly. But the more keyframes you add in the middle of your previous keyframes, the more effort it is to change minor things and sort out where the problems are. So you might scrub along your timeline and see errors in your movements. And if you've got hundreds of keyframes, it gets really tough to try and figure out where the errors are. The other thing I've used is shape keys. So if I click on my line, and I'll go to front view this time, you can probably see that his hair, or his mane, moves from side to side very slightly. There's a slight error in the keyframes there, you can see. I've been working on that and I still can't figure it out. So the hair is moving up and down and side to side. It's a subtle effect, but you can just about see it there. So if I go to frame zero and show you what I've done, there's the lion and I've put in some shape keys. There's a base shape key, so it's all normal with the base shape. And then I added a fur shape key, put the value to one, and then sculpted it into this position. And so now I can change the value and keyframe it as I see fit. And I've got a fur up, so when he jumps up in the air, the fur should rise up with him, and left and right. And you can combine these together, so up and right is like that, and so on. So as we go through the animation, you can see he's in a downward position there, so the hair is facing downwards and then it moves up and you can see my keyframes changing over here as he moves around. It's very subtle at the moment and I might exaggerate this a bit more and maybe push some of these areas out a bit but I'm still experimenting with that aspect at the moment. So in terms of integrating my line into the scene and trying to get it to look a bit more natural I'll bring back my trees and rocks and I'll show you that I've got a point light now so it's very bright like this and you can see that up in the sky up here. It's very bright, but when I add in this weird light thing, as I've called it, it's shining through what's known in the industry as flags or cookies. So they break up the light and make shadows cast in different areas. I've also added a sort of volume box, and it's just a big box with the principal volume plugged into the volume. It's a very low density of 0.03, but with a nice bright light, it looks like the sun's shining through the trees and it gives it this interesting look. It's got a sort of fantasy feel to it 
and in Adobe Premiere I've increased that fantasy feel by adding this overlay layer here. So if I show you what that looks like, it's got this strange sort of glowing embers going across the screen and I've used a soft light overlay and put it down to 15% and you can just see that in the background adding a bit of sparkle and I've played a little with the color correction just to add some vibrancy to the greens. So I'm slowly getting there and I'll be on to the next scenes pretty soon. Like I say the client's fairly happy with this. I'm trying to keep him up to date as much as possible. Especially the more I get into the project the harder it is to make major changes. So it's really important to keep up with the client, make sure they're happy and keep the communication going. So far it's been quite a big learning curve. Hopefully I've got some techniques down now so I can get onto the next scenes and they can be a bit faster than this one in terms of development. Let me know of your thoughts in the comments below and hopefully next time I'll have a couple more scenes. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.